Hi all, welcome to this uh, particular course which is named as API testing and uh, this particular framework uses Java as a programming language with Maven, rest assured Cucumber framework using IntelliJ setup. Now what I have done is I have given an idea about how to set up this particular framework using IntelliJ that is the integrated development environment. Rest assured that's our automation tool which is specifically used for Java. Java is a programming language. Cucumber, which is a BDD framework as such that is we are going to use in the automation framework. Maven as a build tool for Java and Postman as an API test tool for manual verifications before we start with automation. Last but not least, we are using extend reporting and this particular reporting will help you to see how the API is the results of the API test automation is really happening. So what I have done is because this is a complex framework, I have structured this in step by step approach. So the step number one is understanding what's an API, which is an application programming interface. And why is it so popular right now in IT industry? And step number two will be understanding where does API testing really come handy? This is an important parameter. Why is API testing very important? and how does it really come handy when we really do our testing. Step number three is understanding verbs related to APIs. This is very important. Now those who don't know verbs will be touching base on those points of APIs specifically. Then we'll be looking at the step number four. What do we have to validate in API testing? Those, there are some parameters that we have to test in the API testing. We'll be touching base on those points as such. Step number 4b will be looking at some sample real-time app apis we will be looking at some of the apis that which we can use for our practice purposes which are live which are working and which are responding with separate responses as well we'll be using those in our example step number five will be installation and using the postman tool to perform some manual api test we will be performing some manual test before we start with the automation as such Step number six will be installation of IntelliJ IDEA in local machine. We'll be setting up IntelliJ if you don't have it already in your machine. We'll be verifying Java in our local machine and if it is not there, we will have to install it. Then we will have to set up some system variable and environment variable as well. Step number eight will be verify Maven in a local machine. And if it is not there, we will have to install Maven and set up the system and environment variables specifically for Maven. We will create a new Maven project from scratch and we will add the Cucumber dependency that will be step number 9. Step number 10 will be add rest assured dependency. We will add the this particular dependency in our project object model. Step number 11 is going to be a little complex. We will be looking at adding the test method related to get and run the API test to ensure it successfully runs. Step number 11b will be add the test methods related to post and run these API tests to ensure it successfully runs. Step number 11c will be add test methods related to put method and then we'll run these API tests to ensure it is successfully run. Step number 11d will be add the test methods related to delete and run the API test to ensure it successfully runs. Step number 12 will be add extend report. We'll be adding the extend report dependency as such in our project and code related to extend reporting. Step number 13 will be run test. We will have a positive pass. We will have some negative fail ones as well to verify how the test report really looks. So this is going to be a little bit longer videos as such. But at the certain points, we'll be touching base on all these points, which is very important to set up the API test automation framework. So let's proceed. All right, so let's proceed with step number one to understand what's an API. So API is a application programming interface. Now I will explain it in a very simple term. Now if a user tries to access a uh, web application and in this case what I have done is I, as an example, I've just looked at an application which is Ace Online Shoe Portal. Now this web application is something which is visible to the user through his eyes and he's able to see some of the images as well as some of the text which is appearing on the front end. So that's the reason we call the web application as the front end 
facing and the user is able to see all the visual effects of this particular application now this is a simple web application but what really happens in the background is something like this particular web application talks to another third party applications or it talks to the database in the backend and this is where the APIs come into picture so the web application which is visible to the user or the eyes of the user is called as graphical user interface which is for the web application as such but in the backend what really happens is there are APIs which connect to the database or the cloud as such or it connects to third party applications like Facebook, Twitter, Google as such through a application programming interface. So this is just a simple idea of application programming interface with evident of complex technology and architecture coming into picture in IT. What really happened was with the evident of microservices architecture as well as frameworks, there was a concept of application programming interface which helped to connect the front end as well as the back end systems in a very easy manner. Now, if we go into depth of it, what really happens is the GUI, which is the graphical user interface, which is the web application. It could be of different technology. It could be React JS, which is a front end technology. It could be Angular, again, a different front end technology. Or it could be Android, which is a mobile technology, which you use on your phone. Or it could be iOS, for example, it could be an Apple phone as such, which uses the front end perspective. These connect to the APIs. Now the APIs in such a way is our reusable APIs, which can be used in the same front end in a different, which can be on the web page or it could be on mobile. Same APIs can be used and those connect to the database cloud or the third party applications which connect to the backend systems as such. So this is what, how the application programming interface really connect to the really connect the front end as well as the back end systems of the architecture as such. Now, in order to understand our step number two, when do we have to use the APIs for our testing is generally in the development phase. The web applications and the front end applications are not ready because it takes time to understand the text as well as how it has to appear on the front end, which goes to the UX or the UI designs as such. And in the generally, in the general information, the APIs are something which gets ready quickly because um, these are not that difficult to develop. And from the testing perspective, these are ready to test as such so that it at least we know that the data coming from the third party systems or the database is good enough so that we can perform these kind of tests through APIs. So hence APIs are something which gets developed sooner than the graphical user interface or the end to end systems through the front end. That's the reason the test automation team or the testing team can really use these APIs to perform these tests before the GUIs are really developed. All right, now we will look at the verbs of API, verbs related to APIs. Now we looked at this particular uh, diagram where there is a front end which talks to the back end systems and th through this APIs as such. So there you can imagine there are a lot of APIs. It's not only two APIs. There are a lot of APIs, multiple APIs in fact. Now how do these talk with each other? That is a front end as well as the back end. Now using the verbs okay so the verbs that we look at is a get post put patch and delete now you can imagine that the api which performs this get operation is something like you are getting something from the backend system and this particular get verb will not have any response will not have any request body as such so this will be a very simple api call which performs a get operation will be looking into depth of it when we look from practical perspective post is something which we are inserting into the backend okay so we are inserting a data into the database or sending the data into the uh, third party systems okay put and patch is very similar to update so you have some record already present in your database or 
there is a record already present in your third party systems and you are performing a update on that record then you will be required to use put or patch and delete is kind of a self-explanatory wherein you are trying to delete a record into the database or you are deleting the record inside the third party systems so these are the verbs and when we look at some sample apis when we really perform the operation first manual testing we'll be able to understand how these operations or verbs really work so we'll be looking at from that perspective in detail when we look from the practical perspective so these are the verbs uh, someone asks what are the verbs or operations that you can perform the api it almost uh, remains the same concept uh, it you can call it as verb or you can call it as operate for the apis <music>
All right, now in order to test our APIs, any of the operation that is get or post or put or delete operations on an API, that is the URL, what we will require to have is some kind of tool. Now, before we start with automation, general idea is to test those APIs manually, whether those APIs are really working or not. And once it is working, we can go for automation for regression purposes. Now, one important tool for this is Postman and Postman is the leading tool of API testing. If you go in Google search and then if you just uh, enter the details of the Postman download as such, what you will be able to do is uh, you will be able to get details of downloading the Postman and get started for free. So it's kind of a message. You can click on that uh, link and uh, there are a couple of options. One is that you can probably try to use Postman in a browser or you can use it in an app. Okay. Best method is to use it in an app uh, rather than the browser. You can save those um, uh, URLs and as well as the Postman collection as such, which you can reuse later. Okay. And you can use it in the browser as well. It has its own advantages. When you use it in the browser, you can kind of log in, that is sign in, and then try to save those uh, URLs later on that you can use it as well. So in this purpose, what I'll do is I'll just click on this Windows 64 bit and then continue with my installation. Once the installation is complete and you open up a Postman in your desktop, what you need to do is you can probably search for Postman and this is an app which I have already downloaded and installed. Once that is done, uh, this particular app will get opened up. Okay, so this is the app of Postman where you can really test the APIs and then figure out uh, what this particular API is getting returned in the request and the response. Okay, now that is one particular step. Once your installation download and installation is complete of Postman, what you can do is you can uh, have a look at some of the sample APIs. Okay, so in order to look at the sample APIs, I have a link which is uh, fakestoreapi.com. Now what this particular uh, website does is it gives some APIs which are um, currently running its live and it gives res responses as well. If I scroll down a little bit, what it gives is some kind of uh, get as well as post, put, patch, delete as you can see. And based on your request, you can get the responses back. Okay, so I'll just click on the products as such. And uh, I can see that there is an, uh, this particular response is coming back. Now, what I can do is I'll go back to the app and I'll just click on this left widget, which is new. And uh, you can see there are different options over here. There's HTTP, there is a WebSocket, there's socket.ai, GraphQL, gRPC. Okay, so I'll just click on HTTP for the API. And the moment I do that, you can see that this particular widget has opened. And over here, there are different verbs or operations that we can use. We have already kind of understood that these are the verbs that is get, post, put, patch, delete, head and options. We generally don't go for that. But the first thing that we want to really test is our get API. Okay, so I'll just uh, uh, perform an operation of get and then I'll just look for the URL and I'll just pull this URL from here. I'll just copy it, come back to my application and over here, I'll just enter the uh, URL over here. Okay. As soon as I enter the URL, you can see that this is the end URL that I was talking about and this is the base URL that I was talking about. Okay, so fakestoreapi.com itself is a base URL and there is an appending of products. Okay, so this is kind of a controller. Now, how the routing is defined is through your uh, um, URL as such. Now, if I come back to uh, this particular API, which I was showing, now fakestoreapi.com and there is a products. Now products, what it does is it will give you all the products from this API. So this API has been already developed. It's ready to be tested. So what I will do is I'll click on send. And the moment I click on send, you can see that uh, 
I have got a response over here. So at the bottom half of this particular widget, you can see that uh, you can see a body over here. Something like this has appeared. Now this is a JSON format which has responded and this small uh, thing over here is called a status. Okay, which is also called as response code. So if you remember what we were looking for to validate in an API is this particular response code, which is 200. Okay. And apart from that, what we were supposed to see is uh, a validation of response body as well. So you can see some kind of response body has also come in and uh, this particular validation also needs to be performed. Now it depends on the test automation engineer or a tester how much validation they really put in their um, uh, APIs, but there will be kind of a contract or API definition um, based on which this API will will have been designed. So there will be an acceptance criteria for a testing or a tester that these validations needs to be performed on this particular API. Now a classic example I'll give you is if I now if I copy this particular response which has come over here, I'll just copy it because this is an adjacent. What I'll do is I'll just minimize this and I'll go to some free online JSON viewer or reader. Okay, so there are many in uh, market. So if you, what you can do is uh, you can go to either jsonbeautify.com or you can go to JSON formatter or JSON viewer. Either of them, if I go to JSON beautify, uh, and I just paste this particular JSON. Okay. Now the moment I paste this particular JSON here on the left side. Now you can see that the right hand side also has got populated. Okay. So it's nothing um, more fancy. It is exactly what data we have got from this particular API is what has got reflected over here. Okay. So if I minimize this, you can see that uh, there are a lot of data which has come back now since we hit this particular API, what it gave is the products. So it gave all 20 products from this particular API. Now, now if I come to this particular, I'm just minimizing and I can see that there are 20 products which has responded in this particular API as such. And each one can be defined and viewed in such a way that uh, it is easy for you to view. Uh, what all details have responded in this particular API as such. So this is a get API and similar to this in fake store api.com uh, there are other APIs which we will be using for our test automation purposes. But I wanted to give you a uh, guys and an example so that we can use these APIs for practice purposes as well. This is one of the websites which gives free APIs. You need not build your own. Uh, for your test automation or testing purposes, you can use this API. Okay. Now coming back to this particular uh, postman, what we can really do is we can save this API. Okay. Now there is a small button over here, which is save. I'll just click on save. And when I click on save, it is asking whether do you want to create an account or do you want to sign in? Okay. It's up to you whether you really want to do that. Uh, creating an account will be a better option because when you create an account, it will save the requests and you need not again, again and again copy paste these and uh, check whether these can be really used or not. Now what I will do is I have made this get API call. I'll just make a post API call. Now if you remember what we had done in our post API call was that we will require to have a products. Okay, now we will require to have a request body. Now in this case in get API, it was straightforward. We had not uh, put any request. So if I come here on here, there was no request body that we sent across in our API. But that will not be the case in our post API. Okay, post API, we will have to specifically select our raw data. So if I come into our post method, and over here, I'll just put uh, over here as raw data and I will convert this from text to JSON and I'll select a post API from this particular fake API. Okay, so I'll just select products and this is already a product. Now post 
when we will have to select the details now for the products what we have to do is add a new product now add a new product is kind of a post and uh, this body json this is the body that we will specifically require and i'll just copy and then go back to my app and here i'll have to enter this particular json file now in the json we will have to specifically select key value pair in such a way that uh, we define what exactly is our key and what is our value so i'm just setting up these double quotes to make sure our json is correct all right so our json is set up now what i will do is i'll change this title to a product which um, which is a test product now price can be 13.5 description can be lorem ipsum set and then i'll press send and once i do a send you can see that uh, we have got a response as well and over here we have got 200 status okay the moment i do that you can see that there is a post uh, history that is getting created so the first one was a get call and the second one was a post call now one thing to note is uh, this is not getting saved in a kind of a database or something but this is kind of creating a fake responses okay now this we can use for our testing purpose or for our post whether post is getting responded or not even get is getting responded now we are able to see that, that we are getting 220 data now similar to that we will be using uh, these both apis as well as uh, we have some put as well as delete so that we can perform those tests uh, now these are manually working fine we have verified in the postman now our idea is how to automate this and put it in our test automation framework so that we can validate the response codes are coming correctly with the rest assured tool and as well as we will be able to verify that um, we can hook it up with our cucumber file so that we will be able to verify whether it is working as per our given then when format as such okay so let's proceed <music> Now before we proceed with our testing, uh, there is some which I wanted to specifically mention about the APIs. Uh, the response code that we looked at the APIs perspective, it could be of the different response code. Okay, so it might happen that um, when the front end is talking to the back end system, the API call as such might not be successful or the API URL is not correct or the response is uh, negative. Um, or the database is down or the backend systems is down in that case what will happen is you will not get a proper response code so how the apis will be designed is it might be giving 200 okay which is in case of a successful response so it means that the backend system has responded correctly successfully as part of this request going to the backend system and then response coming back or it could be an error code which is 404 that is error not found or url not found or it could be 400 error response or it could be 522 which is a unprocessable entity kind of error now it depends on the development team or the developers how they have designed the apis based on the response code which comes in but most probably 100 percent the successful api response will respond as 200 okay but if it is error then it will not be 200 it will be something like these kind of response codes which is coming from the get operations perspective now we if we look from the post operation perspective the response code will be not 200 it will be 201 and it could be 202 as well but some of the developers what they do is they design the api to respond 200 okay as well so we cannot say it 100 percent it is 201 but it could be depends on the design of the api when you perform a post api call and if it's a successful it could be either of these response codes depends on the api but most probably it will be starting with 20 as such so that you will get a understanding that it's a successful response and similar to uh, post api as well if it's an error response code it could be 404 it could be 400 it could be 522 other than these response codes uh, which is 201 202 and 200 as such 
So the reason I'm saying this is when the APIs have to be validated, APIs have to be tested as an automation tester or, or a testing team, they have to factor in this that if they have to do a positive test, uh, they have to validate, they have to put the validation as the response code equal to 200 when the successful response is coming, but they do have to validate what if they enter some incorrect values or incorrect URLs, they have to validate that uh, the response code is getting validated as different response code. It could be 404, 400 or 522, depends on the API which is respond, response uh, code. So they have to, the automation testing team has to handle these kind of validation. So it's a positive test as well as the negative test. And uh, the negative test also has to pass based on uh, whether the API is really able to respond uh, correctly or not. Okay, in case of uh, post as well, it has to be handled. Now, apart from this, uh, what I wanted to validate more in our automation scripts was if we look at the API that we were looking uh, previously, that is uh, fake api.com and the products response. Now, if you look at the response body, right, there are 20 uh, products which are coming back and these 20 products are coming as an objects. Okay, so we had a look on that. So different objects get created. Now, apart from that, if you see there is a nested objects, so the first product which is getting returned in our response code, that has one, that is the first object, as you can see, that's the first and which is uh, detained by as, as an array value. And that's a zero value of the array. And inside this object, there is a nested object. So there is a rating in, uh, inside the product, okay? So the rating itself is a nested child object inside a parent object. And if, what if you have to validate the rate or the count of this particular product, okay? So the, the rate of this product is 3.9. That is the first project product as such, which is um, backpack laptops. Uh, this is a laptop backpack and um, if you have to validate whether the rate of this particular back laptop backpack is really 3.9 you will have to go inside this particular object so you will have to go inside ratings and then validate it's a uh, 3.9 uh, so you can directly not go to rates as such because it's inside the rating and the rating is inside the product okay so there is a nested object here so when you are validating your automation scripts, you will have to go inside the child object to verify a particular element. Uh, it might happen that you don't get a simple um, JSON in your responses. It, uh, when we looked at our post, we looked at um, uh, a simple JSON which is getting responded. This is what I meant, like when you perform a post operation, you are getting a single object inside your response code, which is kind of simple. Uh, you don't have any rating or you don't have any count as such, which is a child uh, objects getting created. Just, this is just one object as well as a simple object. There is no child object. But if you look at the get uh, response body as such, there are multiple child objects over here, which is getting coming in the response and inside an object there is a child object which is rating okay so this is where uh, we get a little bit complicated wherein we are really doing the automation testing of the api this is where we will understand about the complexity of an api getting responded but we will have to validate this as well when we really perform our uh, api testing and api test automation <music>
select as download based on your uh, requirement whether you need a .zip file or .exe file but .exe file is a better option you can click on download and this will get automatically downloaded in your default downloads folder now once this has got downloaded what you can do is you can go to your downloads folder and just double click on this .exe file and once you double click on the .exe file in your downloads folder you will be able to see something like this which is IntelliJ IDEA Community Edition Setup you can click on next and what it will do is it will select a C drive which is a default folder in your um, machine and it will try to get installed over there so this is the path you have to make a note of this path which is C drive program files JetBrains IntelliJ IDEA Community Edition okay so the version which I have in my machine currently is 2022.3.2 you can select whatever is related to your uh, specific version it could be 2023 as well but it will same as what i have in my machine so i'll just click on next and then it will give a destination folder where exactly do you require to install it click on next 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 and you will be able to get a successful message that the installation has really happened in your machine now once the installation has happened in your machine you have got a successful message you can go into your search bar in your machine and then just search here as IntelliJ and you will be able to see that the moment you type IntelliJ in your search button you will be able to see that something like this is getting opened up which is IntelliJ IDEA Community Edition 2022 so you can double click or single click on this particular window and something like this will open up which is welcome to idea and you can click on create a new project to start with which will be starting soon or you can customize and look at the pl plugins or click on learn just to learn about IntelliJ but what I would suggest is we have to create a new project okay so this was my intention that you at least install IntelliJ idea and something like this web this window should open up so that you understand okay IntelliJ is really set up before creating the new project we have to make sure that our Java and Maven is really set up correctly in our local machine so those couple of steps we will be doing soon in the next section so we are done with step number one which is installation of IntelliJ IDEA in local machine now the second step that we will re really require to do is a prerequisite which is step number two verify Java in local machine and if required we have to install it and then setting up the system and the environment variable now let's get that done for verifying whether the Java is really present in a local machine what we need to do is we need to search a command prompt in our machine so I'll just click on this search button over here and I'll just type over here as command prompt I'll just single click on this and something which like this will open up which is a command prompt now it will by default go to a path which is C users and then your user which is specifically in your machine now I will enter a simple command which is Java hyphen hyphen version in this particular machine and press enter on my keyboard now what I have got here is Java 11.0.19 what it means is Java is really set up in this machine now it may happen that you might not have Java in your machine which might show that it's not able to understand the command of Java if that is the case that you have to install Java in your machine and set up the system variables okay I'll explain that step as well now what we need to do is we need to search in a browser as Java and download and press enter on our keyboard and you will be able to see that there are a couple of links over here one is oracle link and another is directly a java link you can go on either of the locations and get java installed in your machine okay it really doesn't matter recently or previously what had happened is java was acquired by oracle that's the reason there are a couple of links over here now i'll just click on oracle link which is java downloads and the moment I do that you can see that this particular page opens up which is specific 
related to Java downloads. Now the Java latest version currently available in the market is Java 21 and Java 17. Okay. Now these might be the stable um, versions of Java. Um, but what I have done is I have selected something which is JDK 11. Now I just scroll a little bit down and you can see that Java 8 version is also available and Java 11 version is also available. Now it depends on you what you really need to select. Now I have selected Java 11 for the purpose of stability. Java 11 is quite stable and uh, I will just click on this Java 11 tab and then there is an option of Java 11.0.20. Now depends on your OS which is operating system whether which operating system do you have in your local machine and then you can get it installed in your local machine. Now I have Windows currently which I am using in this particular video. I will just go to Windows tab and then there is a 64 installer. Now I will just click on this downloads and the moment I do that you can understand that this gets downloaded in the default downloads folder in my machine. Okay, so make sure that where exactly is your default downloads folder. Generally, it is under C drive into your local machine where it really gets downloaded. Now you can double click it or you can single click it so that it gets downloaded in your local machine as such. Now once you have downloaded your particular .exe file, you can double click on that particular .exe file and you will be able to see that some window will get um, appeared and you can get it installed specifically in your machine. Just proceed with particular steps of installation of Java and then you will be able to very make sure that you understand where exactly the Java has got installed. Now by default I will just explain where exactly Java gets installed and I will show in my machine as well. I will go to C drive and then I will go to program files and I will go to Java folder and over here I can see that there is a JDK-11 folder that has got created. Okay. Now once it has got created, you can just verify what all folders you have. So you have a bin folder, you have a con folder, you have a lib folder. Okay. Now I had already got this done as soon as my Java got installed and I clicked on that .exe file and my installation got completed. Now the reason I am requesting you guys to verify that which particular path is for you in your machine it is important that we set up the environment variable in a particular machine okay now this is the path exactly which is c drive program files java jdk hyphen 11 bin now uh, this exact path has to be entered in our system variables uh, which we'll be doing right now so what I'll do is I'll search environment variables and the moment I search environment in this particular section you'll be able to see that there is an edit system variables control panel okay now I'll just click on it and something like this will open up as you can see there is a system properties and I'll click on environment variables and the moment I click on environment variables this particular window opens up. Now this particular window is important for us so that our Java really gets recognized by our Windows file as such. Now Java is a product of Oracle and it used to be earlier within Sun microsystem. Now Windows is a operating system which is different from Sun microsystems or Oracle as such. That's the reason we have to set up this environment variable and system variables so that our machine recognizes Java particularly. Okay, now the important area where the environment variable and the system variable has to set up is you can see that there is a path over here. Now you need to double click on it and you have to provide the exact path. So you can see over here we had our Java got installed at C drive program files Java JDK. Okay, so exactly the path I have given over here you can see that C program files Java JDK hyphen 11 okay I have not given bin over here but I have just given JDK hyphen 11 now this is the environment variable as variable I have set it up and I'll just close it and I'll go to the system variables now over system variables I have set up a Java underscore home okay now I'll just click on this 
and as you can see i have set up a variable name which is java underscore home and c drive program files java jdk-11 now we have to give the path where exactly is our bin folder okay that exact path has to be given now i have given in the system variable and i have provided the path under this uh, which is environment variable as well and now i am set up with my java paths okay so system variable is also done environment variable is also done please note that if you are running java first time in your machine this will not have been set up and that's the re reason i'm giving this instruction to to the people who are trying this in their machine that you have to set up both this system variable as well as environment variable and then come back and run this command of java hyphen hyphen version once you have set up this you have to come back to command prompt and run this particular command which is java hyphen hyphen version and the moment you do that you can see that you are getting a response back as some kind of version that you have already set up okay so my pc contains java 11.0.19 that's the reason it is showing over here as java 11.01.19 now you might have installed java 11.0.20 that will get appeared over okay so this is important in order to proceed for setting up our project as such all right now our step number two is also done which was a prerequisite now what we have to do is a prerequisite verify maven whether it's really present in our local machine or not if it is not present what we have to do is we have to install it okay and then the uh, setting of the system and the environment variable now this is very similar to our step number two but it is little different as well that's why i had to set it up that this is a prerequisite before we proceed now what we have to do is similar to what we did in the step number two we will go to command prompt so i'll just search command prompt here and something like this will open up as a command prompt now i have to enter a command over here which is mvn and hyphen version okay and press enter on my keyboard now the moment i press enter on my keyboard keyboard there are some details coming out okay so you can see that there is an apache version apache maven already present which is 3.9.1 and there is a maven home setup okay now it's trying to take some details from this particular uh, area wherein it's taking it from c drive users au downloads apache maven 3.9.1 bin and then apache maven 3.9.1 version and it's giving a java version as well so it has already linked the maven itself has linked with java so we have done some settings of maven as well in our system and environment variable after the download that's the reason it is showing okay the maven is already present but if it is not present and if it's showing that it's not able to recognize it's a mvn command what we have to do is we have to install mvn okay now there is nothing specifically called as installation of mvn what we really do is we have we generally download mvn in a particular location and then set up the system and environment variables now let's do that i'll just minimize this command prompt and then i'll just go to my browser and i'll just type here as maven download and the moment i press that you can see that there is a link over here which is apache maven okay now maven is an apache product and i'll just click on download apache maven and you'll be able to come on this particular page which is apache now you have to specifically download a particular version of apache now there are different links given over here which is apache maven 3.9.1 hyphen bin now you can go for .zip file or you can go for .er, .gz as well. Now, what I have done is I have clicked on this particular, um, double clicked on this particular link and it has gone downloaded in a particular version or a particular link where default link of the download as such. Okay. Now, it is important to understand where exactly this has got down. Now, if I search over here in my downloads folder, that is the apache you can see that there is a versions of uh, different versions of apache that i have specifically got downloaded and this has been present in my downloads folder okay that's the reason you could see 
that this particular when I had run MVN hyphen version, it was picking up from particular Apache Maven that is downloads folder. Now, once you have got downloaded this particular file, you need to zip it or you have to unzip these files and you have to uh, try to retrieve the location, exact location of the Apache Maven. And once you have understood where exactly is your Apache Maven, you have to search for environment again which we had done in this, our step number two that is we try to search the edit system variables that is environment variables and this particular window opens up system properties now in this system properties there is a folder there is a button which is environment variables i'll just click on that and you'll be able to see that there are environment variables and the system variables okay now for the environment variables we have to set up a path i'll just double click on this uh, path and you can see that i have specified a particular path over here which is percentage maven underscore home percentage backslash bin okay you need to specify this particular path exactly as it is appearing over here Otherwise, you will not be able to map the Maven into your local machine. Okay, similar to what we had done in our step number two, setting up Java as well. Now, this is the path. Once you have specified the this particular path in the environment variable, you need to specify the system variable. Okay, so system variable, uh, what I have done is, if I go to system variable Maven home, okay, I have created this particular system variable specifically. So I just clicked on new and i created a variable name that is maven underscore home and provided the variable value now uh, i what i did is i provided the maven underscore home as a variable name and i provided the path exactly where the apache maven is present okay now you can see that this is the downloads folder which where exactly it had got downloaded so i'm not installing maven anywhere okay similar uh, in the step number two, we had what we had done is we had specifically installed Java, but here we are not installing Maven. We are only mapping a Maven to a particular system variable. Okay, so once you have set up the Maven underscore home and you have provided the path, as you can see that the Maven underscore home variable is exactly similar to what we had specified in the environment variable as well. So if I go to path. I had already specified maven underscore as a bin. So that is the mapping that I'm doing in my environment variable and the system variable. Okay. Once you have set up this, what you need to do is you need to go back to your command prompt and run your MVN hyphen version. And what you will be able to get is Apache Maven 3.9.1. That means your Maven is also set up in your machine. So we are done with our step number two as well, step number three as well, which is verify Maven and then setting up the system environment. So we installed IntelliJ and then we have set up Java as well in our machine. We have set up Maven also in our machine. Now let's proceed with step number four. <music> All right, now I just wanted to give a quick introduction to what's a BDD framework. Now BDD framework that is behavior driven development approach allows the testers and the business analysts to create test cases in simple test language, generally English. And behavior driven development is a agile software development methodology in which an application is documented and designed around the behaviors a user expects to experience when interacting with it. BDD also offers the ability to enlarge the pool of input and feedback to include business stakeholders and end users who may have little software development knowledge. Due to this expanded feedback loop, development teams may more readily use BDD in continuous integration and continuous delivery environments. Now, there is a given when then formula. It's a template intended to guide the writing of acceptance tests for a user story. Given some context, when some action is carried out, then a particular set of observables consequences should obtain. 
Now tools such as cucumber encourage using of this template though it, is, it can also be purely as heuristic irrespective of any tool. Now in our example in the project what we have done is we have created four folders as such. One is features, second is uh, step definition, third is pages and fourth is utility. Now our given when then um, statements will be stored in the features but when we use those given when then ideally those will be mapped with step definition and those step definition will really contain the operations like um, uh, clicking and where the user is really navigating as a technical term and pages is where we will uh, design all the pages and the objects and methods as such which will be covering trying to understand during the page object model concept and utility is where our browser driver will get stored and any operation related to browser driver will be stored in the utility as such Now that we are not specifically doing UI test in this particular project, we are supposed to do API testing. We don't have pages as such, but we can consider this kind of framework as well just to do the reusability in the API testing as well. I'll explain when it really comes and in the utility as well, as I mentioned, there will be browser driver and in initializing the browser driver as such, but we don't have any browser, right? We just have the APIs to test. So still we can use utility folder as well and I'll explain why. Utility uh, folder as such can contain browser driver as well as hooks. Okay, so we don't have browser driver concept in APIs, but we can still use hooks. Now what are hooks in uh, Cucumber is that Cucumber supports hooks which are blocks of code that run before or after each scenario. You can define them anywhere in your project or step definition layers using the methods at the rate before and at the rate after. Cucumber hooks allow us to better manage the code workflow and helps us to reduce the code redundancy. We can say that it is unseen step which allows us to perform our scenarios or test. Okay, so we can use hooks in our uh, project as well. Uh, so let's create this uh, folder structure in our project so that uh, we can really um, perform these kind of operations all right so let me go to the project as such and over here what we have done is we have created this whole uh, project and we have added the dependency of the cucumber and rest assured so let me add these uh, folders inside java uh, so i'll go to test folder and inside java there is uh, uh, inside test there is a folder called java now I will keep on adding uh, folders over here. So I'll just right click, I'll just select new and then I'll just select package over here and I can name the package as uh, features and then I can add here right click, select new and then select package again and here I'll just add step definitions, press enter on my keyboard and then I'll add pages as well. I'll just right click, add package and add pages and I'll add utility as well. So I'll just select package over here and press enter on my keyboard which is utility and we will add one more folder which is called runner. Okay, so I'll just right click on Java and select a folder which is runner. Now this runner file is uh, important in uh, Cucumber framework because what we'll be doing is we'll be using this runner file to run our test cases and we will be using a glue file to glue the features as well as pages in that uh, particular runner file. So what I will do is I will first write some feature files. I'll just right click on the features. and then select a Java class and right click on new and then go to files and then over here I'll just enter a file name which is 
get products dot feature and then press enter on my keyboard so what it means is uh, this is a feature file now we will require to add some feature details over here now I'll start writing my feature files so I'll just write feature and the moment I write feature right you can see that there is some intelligence already coming so it helps me to understand okay this is the feature that I am get all products from the API and uh, I can add the scenario okay so I'll just write the scenario here now this is the exact convention okay used in the BDD framework and uh, I'll just add verify the get API for the products so this is good enough for our scenario now we will have to add the statements of given when then okay now given I hit the URL of get products API endpoint when in the request I receive the code as okay so I have entered my given when statement I given I hit the URL of get products API endpoint I pass the URL of products in the request I receive the response code as 200 now this is a very simple test okay we just are verifying the response code in this particular uh, feature file so this is good enough for the feature file to start now as I said that the feature file will be calling our uh, step definitions so what we will have to do is we will have to enter the step definitions okay so I'll go to the step definitions and over here I'll right click and then select new and add a Java class now here I'll just name this as Java class and pass the details of products and here I will just write at the rate given and the moment I type that you can see that it's uh, trying to take an annotation from uh, Cucumber Java so which is good and I'll just pass my details over here with the double quotes and just go to get products and from here I'll just copy this statement okay and come back to products and then paste my uh, details over here and then I'll add a method over here public void and the method generally what we have to write is exactly same as to the given statement that we have up so I'll just write I underscore hit underscore the underscore URL underscore off underscore get underscore products underscore API underscore endpoint now some of uh, my students would be wondering like is it really required to write this big method um, now it won't hurt you to use something like get products as a method but it won't generally work you can try out it uh, by yourself and see whether it really works but uh, this method name has to be exactly similar to what you have for the given statement okay so that's the reason I'm writing this method um, exactly similar to what is there in the given statement with that underscores uh, between the words all right now what I have to do is the first test uh, which I wanted to really try is that uh, I want uh, my uh, receive response code as um, 200 status okay uh, so the response code that we are getting should be 200 so that is a validation we have to put in our given statement so ideally this has to be put under then statement when and then statement but what I will do is I'll just put it in the given statement and see whether my validation really works or not and then we'll try to split it split it up into different statements of when and then okay so what I will do is I'll just write my statements so I'll start with the uh, statement as rest assured 
and uh, the moment I uh, just press as res you can see that the there is a rest assured coming from rest assured and we had because we had already added this library or dependency into our pom.xml that's the reason this is coming as rest assured okay now rest assured dot I'll just paste a, a particular method which is a base URI okay so I'll just add the base URI and I'll just hit the base URI list with the double quotes and the base URI that we have is the fake store API that we had looked okay so I'll just add the base URI HTTPS uh, forward slash forward slash and the API was fake store API okay dot com and then forward slash and then with a semicolon in the end okay now apart from that what we have to do is we have to declare a response so response also is part of uh, rest assured uh, and the response we will store it in I'll declare a particular variable called response and then I'll just type here HTTP request dot get and then uh, I'll just add products over here okay now I'll explain why I'm doing this products and then end my statement now there is no HTTP get request now if I hover on top of this now we are not getting the HTTP request now why we are not getting get HTTP request is we have to declare another variable okay now this is request specification so I'll just add request specification and this request specification is also coming from rest assured okay now I'll add this particular HTTP request and equal to rest assured dot given okay and in my statement so what it means is it has got this particular variable which is HTTP request if you remember what we had really spoken about was about a base URL okay so when I was explaining about APIs I was talking about base URL now at if you look at this particular base URL fake store api.com okay so this is the base URL and this will remain constant okay um, with our APIs what I meant by that is that if we go to our APIs that we were trying to hit right now we were trying to hit this particular API now over here this is the base URL that we will consider which is fake store api.com which is a common step okay and common uh, endpoint URL and something after that will change now even the post has this particular fake store api.com and then uh, the subsequent will be a get call or it will be another routing as such okay now uh, that's the reason i have put it under base uri and it will store this particular response and what we have to validate is the response code okay so what we will do is now response code how we will really get is if I just type response okay so now response itself gets stored now if I press dot over here you can see I have different methods which will get uh, help me out like for example this get body will give me the body of the response get status code will be giving me status code okay now uh, what I will do is status code I'll select okay now uh, when I was uh, hovering on top of this you can see it's an integer okay so when i was talking about the status code as such which is 200 or 404 or 522 this is what is getting stored in this as an int so it could be 200 okay now uh, what i really want to do is i want to store this into an integer okay so i'll just type here as response code equal to response dot get status and after that what we really want to do is we want to perform an assert okay if I'm an automation tester if I don't assert then what is the use so I will have to make an assert statement over here and I'll just make assert equals now if you are not getting uh, this assert equals what you can really do is you can import a statement over here and just copy this particular import statement and then add it over here on top and then uh, I can add the a add j unit to class path so what it will do is it will 
add the dependency and then this assert equals will get added now response code okay so we are storing this response code and then we are trying to compare it with um, re response code as uh, 200 okay now this is what validation we are doing now let's do a build let's go to on top and let's press on build project and let the build get completed it's a passing java and then what I will do is I'll just click on this particular run scenario okay so what it's doing is in my feature file it is running only the given statement okay when and then we have not declared as of now in our products uh, class and that's okay as of now now you can see that uh, when I hover on top of the when statement and then statement it is just giving me a warning undefined step reference I pass the URL so there is no step which is defined for this particular um, statements of when and then now what I will do is I'll just click on run button and let's see what really happens in our given when then statement so what happens is uh, once I run this particular uh, step you can see that when and then has not been declared yet okay so step defined you can implement this step and one other step using snippet below so what I will do is I'll just copy this and this is one of the another mechanism where we can uh, really pull the methods and just push it into our step definitions okay easier to do this now I'll just come here on my products.java file and then add the statement and I'll not get this error uh, as of now okay nothing is there so you have not written any any code as such in this uh, particular uh, when and then methods as such but um, because it's giving an error I'll just proceed I just click on build again and build project and once the passing happens and then uh, build is successful i'll just click on this particular play button again the run button and i've got this error which is uh, step pending to do implement me okay so when and then has not been implemented yet which we are already aware but if you come here and see that one one step has passed okay so what really has happened is that uh, our first step step which is I hit the URL of the get uh, products API which we had already declared all the statements have passed now how do we really know whether this assert is really happening whether the uh, this particular all steps are happening and the uh, response code is also correct now we will use a mechanism in IntelliJ to do we use the breakpoints okay now what we'll do is we will just put uh, our breakpoints here uh, somewhere in the response as well as the response code which is getting generated and the assert statement okay now what will happen is we just want to see what are the response that we get from this APA and what is the response code which is coming from this APA as well okay now one good mechanism in IntelliJ is that uh, you can perform debug mode as well that is the uh, before you really test you can do the debug mode now how do we do the debug mode in our IntelliJ is that you can see and come here that what we have been doing is we have been running our scenarios right now if we want to run it in our debug mode you just have to click on this particular bug which is is coming over here you can just click on it and then it will run in the debug mode so wherever you have put breakpoints in your code uh, especially in your methods not in your feature file anywhere but in your methods okay over there it will the code will get stopped and then you will be able to verify what all variable values are really coming okay so we will just click on this debug mode and when it runs uh, it will stop over here okay so it has stopped it is on this particular uh, uh, line line number 24 and even you know to proceed with your uh, running of the code you can just click on this particular button which is resume program okay so it will go it will not do anything it will resume the program so I'll just click on resume program and it will proceed hopefully it has gone uh, and the response have come okay now this is very important what I will do is I will just hover on top of this response and you can see that the response also received okay so you can see that there is a, a plus button over here so if I expand this you can see a kind of a groovy response which has come I'll just click on this particular groovy response and you can see that there are some details which have already come in my responses similar to what we got in the postman okay so we had got uh, a postman 
uh, when we were performing the API test, right? We were getting some headers in the response. We were getting some header response. We were getting the status 200 OK as well. If I go back to this particular IntelliJ for automation purposes, I can see that the response is also coming. Okay. Uh, now I'll just hover on top of this response again. I'll just click on this particular button and I'll show the res groovy response. Now in the response, there are some headers coming. Okay. At what time this has been performed really, there are some headers. There are good amount of headers as well, but what we are interested is in the status 200. Okay, status code. Now this status uh, code equal to 200 is coming. And uh, what we were interested is also in the body. Okay, so what is what is the body that our response is also coming is which we were interested on. We will look at the body aspect later on, but we were the first test that we wanted to do is whether this, uh, the value of the response code is really 200. Now what I will do is I'll just click on this resume program and I'll just proceed. And what has happened is this response will give this status code. Okay. And it will put it into this particular integer. And if I hover on top of response code, what it has done is it is received as 200. Okay. So it means the response code is also coming which is good and this was our part of the validation and um, uh, after that we are doing an assert now because the actual is 200 and the uh, response code is also 200 that's why our assert is passing and our test step itself is passing okay that is the whole idea now i'll just click on resume and then it will proceed that it the res, uh, assert also has passed and uh, we are able to proceed with our test now, uh, what is missing is that we will have to divert uh, some of our test steps into when and then so that it's kind of a good in the readable format. So now we were when we were looking at the BDD framework, right? And we were looking at the given when then statements. Ideally, some of the business analysts or the project managers who are non technical, they will not understand what's really going in into your code. So that's the reason we will have to bifurcate these steps into BDD approach. That is a behavior driven approach so that we understand. Okay, fine. This is how uh, we have to uh, put it into our statements. Okay, now uh, let's do that. Let's uh, put it into uh, different statements uh, and then classify this as to given when then statements. All right, so in order to uh, move some of the statements into uh, when as well as then, what we will have to uh, do is we have we will have to declare some of the variables as uh, public variables. So what will I do is uh, I'll just uh, create this particular request specification variable as public. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just add a public request specification and that's an rest assured and uh, I'll just type over here as HTTP request okay and I'll declare it I'll declare it outside the method so that it becomes a public one okay and other methods can really use it so the moment I do that what I can do is I'll just remove request specification over here okay because it's already coming from HTTP request now apart from that what I will have to do is I will have to move response as well up uh, as well as up okay so I'll just write over here as a public response and after that I'll just declare here the variable which is response okay and I'll remove the response from here and same with my response code as well so I'll just add here as public response public int and this will be my response code okay which i'll declare here and then i'll remove this uh, it's not required int over here it's already uh, taking from there so i'll just move it as response code all right so i declared that uh, all these ones and uh, what i'll do is i'll slowly um, uh, remove some of these methods into um this particular method okay so i'll just come here into when method i'll just add it over here and you can see that uh, there is no error and uh, i'll just move this comment which uh, had automatically come above or i can probably remove it as well it was already uh, re 
added so that it's just kind of a comment okay all right uh, apart from that i'll take the response over here okay and from the response i'll just cut it and then paste it over here all right and hence our given when then statements are now uh, populated as well and uh, i'll go to the get products uh, dot feature file and then i'll just click on build and build the project and the build is completed and after that i'll just uh, run it directly i'll not go into debug mode i am pretty confident that this will run and i have still got this error which is step pending to do implement me and why i have got this particular message is because uh, i did not remove this particular uh, statement which is pending exception okay so it's automatically taking throw this uh, pending exception so i'll just remove this statement and as well as line number 35 which is not required in the then statement after that i'll do build build project and once build is successful i will just run this and see whether my test really passes and our test has passed okay now this time around you can see that uh, it was uh, one particular scenario uh, and it consists of all three test steps and um, it has uh, all three test steps have passed which is good so our status code is getting verified in the api that is what we wanted uh, and uh, uh, we have converted it into a BDD framework as well, which is a Cucumber framework. And Cucumber file itself is calling these methods. Okay, so we have been able to achieve this uh, in our uh, testers. Now we'll look at the reporting aspect later on. Uh, what uh, we are interested now is that we want to validate the response as well, right? Now, uh, what uh, we were actually testing in our API of the get was that uh, something in our uh, response is also coming. So one of the response, so if I'll go back to my Postman collection, right? Sorry, Postman API. And I perform just a get call here, right? I don't want um, the body to send any request. I will come to this particular body, right? and uh, i'm just doing a get call in postman right and one of the validation that we want to do is that the first uh, product okay so the first product which is coming which is a laptop backpack and uh, that's a rate of 3.9 i'm not sure whether it's a dollar or a pound or it's a rupees or whatever it is there is no uh, currency but you can see the rate is coming as 3.9 Okay, and this is an integer. You can have a look. Now, how do we classify this as an integer? Is if it would have been a string, it would have been in a double code, something like this, like men's clothing. Now, men's clothing, it's a string, and that's why it's in the double quotes. So, this is coming as a int integer. Now, what we will try to do is we will try to create an another test of a get um, uh, get method as such, right? And that should contain uh, the first product that gets uh, responded in our uh, body response. Body response that should have a value of 3.9. Okay, that's the first product. Now, uh, however times we hit, we can see that uh, this particular uh, rate seems to be very constant, which is 3.9. Unless somebody changes, as a developer changes this particular rate, it will remain constant. Okay, so. We are trying to add this particular validation in our test automation scripts and please note this is something like a child uh, object it's not a uh, it's not a uh, simple one it's it's going to be a first product altogether and within that first product it is going to uh, contain this particular child object okay and this child object we will have to retrieve from this particular child object and uh, validate whether it's uh, really 3.9 so let's do that uh, I'll go back to IntelliJ and I'll start constructing my scenario name. Okay, so I'll just add over here a scenario name. And there is a this is a good way, right? This IntelliSense is giving me okay. This is kind of a syntax of scenario. Verify the rate of the first product is um, correct. 
so this is my scenario now given um, I hit the URL of get products API endpoint okay now this is an example where I am trying to give you guys um, an idea how we can re really reuse some of our methods as well okay so some of my students have been saying okay uh, whatever you teach kind of teach in a way where uh, we can reuse some of the uh, methods okay it shouldn't be like a kind of a redundant uh, way to um, make the code it has to be way that uh, one method is being called by multiple features and all that this is what I am trying to uh, show in this particular video okay API endpoint I'll select that this is what I really wanted and I'm kind of reusing it um, and if I type then um, sorry I have already entered the given statement what I'll try to do is I pass the URL of the products in the request okay so this is the uh, method this is the statement that we really want to call and then I verify that the rate of the first product is rate okay now what did I do here right now uh, I have tried to make this as a dynamic value now it might happen in the future that this particular API might return the first statement or the first product which is it might be 5.3 or it might be 4.3 the same product or it could be that the different product comes into this API but we want that to be validated as well okay so I am trying to make this as a kind of a dynamic value whichever the first product is it should get validated in my API uh, I am trying to pass on a test data okay so here I have given an example and from here what I am saying is first product rate okay now at this point of time the first product rate is every time constant okay so it's coming as 3.9 no matter what uh, so this is what I want to validate okay 3.9 now it might happen maybe after five sprints or six sprints requirement might change okay product owner says to the developer hey I want to change this rate now it might happen that we are trying to sell this product for 5.3 okay maybe after two sprints or three sprints this might change that's the reason I'm trying to add this particular statement over here okay so that it's kind of I need not go into the scripts and very uh, and uh, modify this I can really change a particular value over here which is a simple value and then it will automatically uh, make the change in the method okay so uh, I have entered the first paid product uh, first product rate and I change it over here as first product rate okay now uh, it's giving me uh, undefined step reference right uh, we have already seen this so what we have to do is we have we have to go to products and over here we just have to add a then statement okay so kind of a reusability and uh, what I do is I come here in the products and I'll just directly copy this one all right so I have entered uh, this particular method and now what I'll do is I'll just add here as a response okay now here the response is important now uh, what I'll do is I'll just add a add a here as a response body okay I'll go uh, and declare a public response body and this is also a rest assured so I'll just type here as body and come down and over here I'll just start with body and pass the value of response now here because we are not getting the status code what we are interested here is the get body okay and we have to get the body first of the response and after that we have to convert the response body into a string okay so what I will do is string and then response body equal to body dot you can see that uh, there is an a string and I will just add a comment over here which is convert the body response body 
into string so I'll just add the comment here and after that once the response body has been converted into string the response body will contain string okay and once the string is there what we have to do is we have to have a JSON representation from the response body okay so what I have to declare is the JSON path and I'll have to use JSON path as such equal to response dot json path which is i'll add a statement over here that this is a re json res representation from the body and we'll have to create a string equal to json path get get json object okay so we are trying to get the json object and then we will try to get rating okay dot to string okay so we will try to run this before that what I wanted to really show is the reason we are uh, using this uh, JSON path and we are uh, trying to get the JSON object out of this and why we have entered rating over here is I'll just go back to my postman collection postman API again and what I'm trying to retrieve is the object called rating okay so I'm trying to get object rating as a string and I am trying to enter the value of the string into S. Okay, that's what I am trying to do. Now, uh, if I go back and as we can see that there are a lot of objects that are created based on the products. So last time we had checked there were 20 products. Okay, and uh, what we were using is I'll just copy this particular JSON response and I'll just go to JSON viewer and uh, I'll just use online JSON viewer one of the free ones which are uh, available and I'll just paste it over here in the text okay and I'll go into the viewer so what is happening is our response which is coming back those are 20 objects okay so this is what I was trying to talk about is there are 20 objects over here and out of that there is the first product which is the first uh, object for us okay and within that there is a rating okay uh, which is a child object and under this particular uh, first product okay so the first object out of the 20 objects and that out of that first uh, object we are trying to get the child object out of this uh, uh, first uh, object as such and what we are trying to retrieve is this value which is uh, 3.9 so what we have really done in our code is we have really taken uh, the whole response and from that response we are trying to get a JSON path and from JSON path we are trying to get the object which is rating okay that's what we are trying to do now uh, now let, let's try to run this and see whether our um, uh, code is really getting these uh, particular values or not okay now I if you notice what I said is values and not value and I'll show you why as well and uh, let's go to this debug mode so we will start with the debug mode we will uh, before that we will do a build I'll just click on the build project and once the build is successful what I can do is I, I will go to the debug mode and then I'll just click on this okay uh, right and I have gone into this particular uh, statement so I'll just uh, pause this and what we wanted to do is within the features right uh, which in the features there are uh, this particular uh, feature or this particular scenario that we want to do really test okay so what I will do is I'll select over here and uh, I'll just go to the verify rate okay so I can go here and then select this particular uh, feature because we have already verified the first uh, feature which is good we are now interested in this uh, debug uh, of the second uh, scenario okay so I'll just click on the scenario button and uh, what has really happened is it has gone into the given statement okay so we had put the uh, what you call the breakpoint earlier itself so it will go through that I'll just click on the resume and the API is running in the background 
and it has waited over here okay uh, the statement of then now this is a very good important statement and please note what i am trying to do here i am trying to hover on top of this response body okay now when i am trying to uh, hover on top of the response body um, you can see the response body um, you can see the whole response so i'll just slowly move my cursor over here and then click on this plus button when i click on this plus button you can see the whole response has got captured okay this is the same response that we had got it in our postman okay just to be sure this is id one and then this is backpack which is a laptop backpack okay and what we are trying to retrieve over here is 3.9 okay so our response has come over here but now what we really want is a rating okay uh, so what we did is we have provided the rating over here okay so if you notice uh, the rating has come here and we are hovering down top of this s okay so what s contains right now is only rating it does not contain the whole uh, json response we have drilled down to that particular rating okay and uh, the moment I go and click on this plus button, this is a very big um, response still, very big string. You can see that the rating has come as 3.9 and the count has come 30, 120. Okay. So what really happened is because I have specifically said rating over here, okay, what uh, our re uh, string contains now is the rating for all the products. Okay. Uh, it contains the rating of 20 products that is 20 objects okay so that's the reason it is it has come as a big string altogether now how do we get the uh, first rate uh, first rate of the rating okay that is our uh, question now if we want the first rate of the rating which is the child of that parent we will have to do some modification on our script so i'll just stop this and what i will do here is I will pass on this value of the first rating. So rating itself, we will uh, add a parameter and index of the array. So we have got a big array of the rating and out of that we will take the first array and out of that dot we will provide the rate. Okay. Uh, so what it will do is a first product that we have, it will try to take the rate of the first product. Okay. Now I will click on this build and once the build is successful i'll just uh, click on the debug mode so i'll go back to the product dot features i'll just click back here and i'll just right click and then click on the debug mode okay so again i'll just click on resume button and it has stopped over here okay at our breakpoint now what has happened is our s is exactly equal to 3.9 okay so what it means is it has picked up the rate of the first uh, product as such okay and um, if we would have required the second product or, or the rate of the second product okay what we would have required to do is just a simple modification that is a rating has to be this particular index has to be changed to one okay now I'll just show that as well. I'll just uh, stop this and then I'll just change it to one and then I'll do a build and then I'll just go back to my feature dot feature file and then click here, right click in fact, and then debug mode. And I'll just click on the resume button. And then it has stopped here. So what has happened this time is it has given the 4.1 which is the second product okay now if those who do not believe me what i can do is i can go to postman collections and i can see that the second product 4.1 is the rate okay so uh, that is how we generally get the uh, child object of a parent object and if there are a lot of objects that's what we try to do. We try to give the index and then try to retrieve it. Now what I will do is I will quickly do an assert and uh, pa pass the parameter as well. So what I will do is I will pass this 3.9 and this will be passed to this particular statement which is then statement and after that it will enter here and from here it will do an assert. So I will just 
stop this and I'll change back to the rating that is I'll change it to first product and then add the details about here now one thing I have to note over here is that uh, our first product rate right uh, we have to put this particular test data into curly bracket into this particular bracket which is uh, lesser than and then uh, the test data and then greater than as well all right now uh, why this is specifically required is because we are supposed to take it from the examples so i have modified this to examples and when it is examples please note that you will have to make your scenario as scenario outline okay because this this above scenario which was related to status code that does not contain any examples that's why we had to mark this as scenario but because uh, our second scenario is having examples that's why i have to make it that uh, make this one as scenario outline okay now i'll go to the products and in here i have uh, added the assert okay now the assert has to be in such a way that uh, we have to compare two strings okay now um, when we are comparing two strings what we are really doing is we are passing the string from here as well now uh, this is uh, required because we are passing this as a string and then we are validating uh, in the products we are uh, passing into this method as a string and from there we are uh, comparing this uh, both values as an asset value okay so let me rerun let me build this and let me uh, do a run through the debug mode so I'm just clicking on this debug mode and I'll just run this particular resume uh, program because we have already gone through the given method I just click on resume program and after that I have come here okay so in then statement I have put this break point and you can see uh, that the rate has come as 3.9 so where is this rate coming from this is coming from our get products dot feature okay this is where it's coming from uh, into this method and then uh, once it comes here as a rate it's going down here into assert equals okay and apart from that we were already getting 3.9 over here in the string uh, so i'll just click on resume and it will stop here and you can see that our response body is coming and then we are uh, adding a json path and from there we are taking the get json object and uh, our get json object is the first product rate okay which is 3.9 and then it's comparing and i'll just click on resume uh, program and then you can see that the uh, uh, three steps have passed and the one scenario has passed okay so that's how we uh, have to validate for our response uh, body as well for the get method okay uh, now um, if we have to run this whole feature what we can do is we can directly click over here and then this uh, feature which consists of two scenarios which is validation of the response code and the response body as such both can be validated so i'll just click on this run feature which consists of both scenarios and the test is running as you can see and uh, you can see that the two scenarios have passed and six steps six steps have passed okay uh, so all six steps which validates the status code and then uh, the validating the response body as well both have been validated from get api perspective cool now let's try to perform the post validation that is we had a post api and uh, this is the post api which we were looking in the postman and uh, this is the endpoint URL that is fake store API products and uh, you can see that the uh, API itself that the uh, endpoint uh, URL itself is uh, exactly same as the get API okay which uh, is need not be the same in most of the cases but in this case it is same okay so let's see whether we can reuse that or not but we are passing a body as well here okay in in the request we are sending a body 
and uh, uh, when we are sending this uh, like we are performing this uh, post api call what's happening is we are getting a response back okay so the 200 okay is the response uh, code which is coming back and uh, there is an id which gets generated okay so this is kind of an insert like we are inserting a product as such and uh, we are getting the title we are getting the price we are getting the description image category okay now uh, when we are passing the title as test product uh, the title itself is coming as test product in our uh, response as well okay response body and something extra which is id is coming back okay so we will put a validation on that and we will verify that the status code is also 200 okay when we perform a post all right now let's go back to our intellij and let's create a feature file here now uh, this feature file uh, we can create uh, right click on the features and then uh, select new and then hover on top of files and over here what we will do is insert products okay this is what we will uh, add and um, insert product in fact and dot feature is what we will enter and then press enter on the keyboard okay now what i will do is i'll go to get products and i'll just copy the feature and the scenario first scenario i'll go to insert uh, product or feature i'll just paste this and i'll change the feature name there is insert uh, product or uh, insert product using api okay using post api this is what we what, what i will add the feature now it re really doesn't matter uh, it depends on how the test automation engineer really wants to uh, enter these details into the feature and then scenario is validate insert product api insert or validate post api post product api works works correctly and then what i'll have to change the given statement is uh, given i hit the url of get product api endpoint that is post product api endpoint i pass the url of the products in the URL request i receive the response code as 200 okay so i can reuse what i had put in my products uh, java file right uh, I had already entered the details of the pass the URL of the products. Okay, so here I am already passing the URL of the products. But having said that, we are lit doing something little different in the post API, right? I hit the URL of the post when I pass the URL of the products in the request. And so I'll just uh, add a and statement and I pass the body, request body, request body of product. Now, uh, what I can do is uh, product title as uh, something that is we can put it as a dynamic value and over here, I'll just add uh, a test data. Okay, so I'll make this a scenario outline similar to what we did in the uh, get call. That is the second scenario. So I'll just add uh, examples here and uh, I'll add one example which is product title. So I have better to put it in one statement. I have added one product title and uh, what i'll do is over here i'll just add um, as shoes okay uh, as my product now i will add product title here and it should take it from down below that is both the statements have not been defined in the test step so what i'll do is i'll click on create a test step and uh, step definition file so it is looking for uh, do you want to create a new file or do, can you use the products so i'm happy to use in the products and the moment I do that, you can see that uh, this stuff definition has got created, okay, which is good. So, and even method has got created, okay. So this method is a little different from underscore, but it is it is working. It is already showing as one usage, which is fine. We can proceed now. And uh, what I'll do is I'll come back to the feature file, and you can see that the uh, uh, step definition is done. Similar to this, I'll add the uh, and uh, statement as well. So I'll just create the state uh, step definition i'll just select in the product um, uh, products dot uh, java file okay now now what we have to do is we have to pass on the parameters uh, of the post endpoints so what we really have to do is we have to similar to what we did it uh, for our um, uh, get get api
Now I'll add the request specification and uh, that will be re I can reuse the request specification so I'll just go, on, go down below HTTP request and we'll use this rest assured given now I'll have to create a JSON object so what I'll do is JSON object will have to create a request parameter okay so I'll just pass request params equal to new JSON object and we will have to pa pass the request params with uh, the details that we really want to pass uh, that is uh, we will have to pass the details of these parameters which is title price description image category okay so i'll just add those now it is important to know that uh, what all parameters or what all headers are you passing in your post uh, method okay so when i go back to my postman you can see that it might happen that we will require some additional headers to be passed as part of the post it happens as well like you might require to sem uh, send some headers along with your body request or you might not require to send these are like default headers but apart from that there are uh, sometimes what is required is you require to send an access token as an header okay so in that case you might have to add some additional headers and you might have to add something like this authorization or something like that so in that case you will have to pass those headers as well okay but because our api in this case in my example currently it does not require any header as such it requires only body parameters okay the request parameter uh, that we have to pass that's the reason we have to add this request params dot put okay now uh, i'm getting an error over here json object okay so uh, json object is not getting recognized it was getting recognized but suddenly it's not so i'm just hovering on top of this and it's requesting me to import class okay so once i import the class this error is gone now i will scroll a little bit up and i can see that the import org dot json dot simple dot json object okay so it's importing from a particular library called json object now if you are not able to see this as well and it's not recognizing this what you can do is you can add a dependency okay so the dependency name as such is is this particular dependency so if you come to Bavin repository you will be able to see that this particular dependency has to be added in case you are getting an error that is uh, com dot google code dot json simple and this is the version 1.1.1 in case you are getting still an error and you are not able to import that is the dependency that you have to add now i can go into pom.xml and i have not specifically added that and i have not uh, got error as of now in my products.java but uh, if you are encountering error what i would advise you is get this particular dependency added and then your error will go, go away okay so this we can scroll down and this error should go away which is json object request params okay now request params dot put okay so there are two um, variables or parameters that we have to add now if if i hover on top of this you can see this put is a kind of a hash map now those who don't know about hash map hash map is a uh, specifically way in java where you can pass the key and value pair okay so you can pass two parameters and those two parameters will be taken as a key value pair mechanism and i'll explain how it's uh, done as well now uh, i am adding two parameters over here and uh, then closing my bracket and the parameters that i will pass over here is the first parameter that we have that is the title okay so the title i'll just pass here as title and uh, i can pass this as shoes okay now we will modify this don't worry because what we are doing is we are trying to pass this as a product title and then going to use it so i'm going to do that uh, i'm going to modify this shoes as a parameter so that it can be dynamic uh, value of the title as such apart from that i have to pass the different other parameters which is uh, appearing for my uh, 
request uh, body as such. So price, description, image, and category. So let me do that. All right, so I have passed all the parameters now. Uh, so what I wanted to pass the parameters was title, price, description, image and category. Okay, so don't get uh, worried. Now this is exactly the parameters that we were passing in the postman. And the postman was responding as 200. Okay, so what we are trying to do here is we are trying to hit this particular URL and then we are passing the parameters of um, the given when then format in way where, where we will be able to hit the post API call and then uh, try to get. Now I'll just pass the parameter as request HTTP request dot body. And so we are passing the uh, body request over here in this parameter. So what I'll do is request params dot to JSON string response response equal to HTTP request dot put products response body body equal to response dot get body then end your statement now system dot out dot print ln so what we are trying to print the response as such get body system dot out dot print ln body dot as string so I'll just change this from response dot get status line and then I will do a build after that, uh, what I will do is I'll put the breakpoints over here and we'll see whether our response is getting captured over here correctly or not. So I'll run this particular insert.feature file and then we'll right click here and then click on debug. So it has stopped over here. So as you can see that uh, we have got the request parameter. I'll just click on resume and you can see. All right. So we have got a response over here. Now I'll just uh, hover on top of this as a response and I'll go to the re groovy response and I can see that uh, there are some response details as in the status code is coming as 400 now 400 means there is not found not found generally happens when there is the URL itself is wrong. So what I will do is I'll recheck the URL. Now what I am doing here is I'm passing the base URI. Now the fake store api.com. This is the base URI. And after that I am put I'm adding here as a put verb, which is incorrect. Okay, so I will, I will have to change this to post. And what I will have to do is I'll have to remove this particular uh, uh, forward slash as well in my products. Okay, because what is happening is the front slash is uh, already added over here in the base URI and then the products is uh, not required to have the forward slash. Okay, uh, it will automatically take it from the base URI and then we are passing this particular uh, products uh, details over here. Now what I will do is I'll just uh, cl uh, click over here and then build project and once the build has been completed. Okay, some of the classes now I'll just click on reload. Okay, so I think I'll have to stop this execution and then I'll have to click on build project. Once the build is completed, I'll have to go to insert product and then right click on this and then click on debug project. Okay, so my uh, execution have started again and then I'll click on the resume program and after that I'll click on the resume program again. And the breakpoint will reach line number 70. Okay. Now I've got a response. I'll just hover on top of this response and I'll just click on this plus and then go to the groovy response. And you can see I am getting 200. Okay. Now 
the post has been successful i am getting the uh, 200 ok as well now what i will do is i'll click on resume program and uh, again i'll click on the resume program and let me check in the response now and the body okay so there is a groovy response body and uh, i am getting this 200 ok which is good now i'll click on resume program and i'll check on the body dot as string and you can see that uh, there is an id uh, equal to 21 which is coming okay which is good so we are our we are getting the id as well back and we are getting this um, uh, response back as well uh, and the status code also looks good which is 200 okay so that's what i wanted to verify okay now our post is running successfully in test automation script now insert product also looks good only thing which is missing is uh, we will have to bifurcate like as in we will have to separate our statements uh, to cater to and statement as well okay uh, we have already catered it for our um, uh, 200 status okay so we can kind of reuse this line number 35 i receive the response code as 200 uh, which is going to be the uh, kind of a reusability concept and uh, what i have to do is i have to move this particular uh, statement which is products specifically into uh, this particular area of and okay so what i will do is i'll probably move this code from here to here now when we are moving this particular statement of http request uh, from from the and statement from the given statement to the and statement we will have to make sure that our uh, request uh, that is the request parameter is uh, public okay so what i will do is i'll just move this to the and statement and i'll make this request params as public okay now what i will do is i'll remove the json object over here and then i'll just declare it up in the uh, class that is public json object and then request params okay so may, i'm try, trying to make this request params as public so that um, my uh, request params becomes public and then i can use in multiple methods as such okay so i have done that uh, and you can see that even the uh, the error is gone now i'll just uh, perform the build again and uh, after that i'll go to insert product and after that i'll just right click and then perform run and check whether uh, the run is successful or not okay so the things have uh, passed now our scenario has passed and out of this uh, all four test steps have passed okay so we have to make sure that uh, all, what are these four test steps which is given i hit the url of post product api now validate post product api works correctly okay which is which is what we want now uh, in this particular statement i pass the request of the product title product uh, uh, product title okay so we are not passing anything over here and if you remember what we are doing over here is that uh, whatever title it is we will try to use that okay so we have been passing here as shoes and uh, what we really want is uh, we want this to be kind of dynamic so that uh, whatever title it is there we can um, use that as in our product title so what i will do is i'll just cut this particular statement as well and move it to uh, the request okay so i will just move it here and because it's a public that is a request param is public as such we are good we it doesn't really matter and um, the request parameter dot put so i'll just make this shoes as title and we will pass title over here okay so that's already get getting passed from uh, this particular uh, value now i'll just perform build again and uh, what i will do is i'll go here in my products and then i'll just put uh, a breakpoint over here and then come to insert product i'll just right click here and then do a debug and let this run i'll just uh, so over here you it has stopped at the breakpoint as you can see and what's happening is title choose is coming okay so whatever we passed here 
uh, I, it is going through into this particular method and it's coming as um, shoes over here in the title okay now i'll click on resume and what i wanted to really see is whether i am getting a, a status 200 equal to okay so which i am getting which is good so uh, my whole purpose was to show how i can really customize the product title as well based on which uh, whatever is sent across here i get as 200 status okay and i'm validating that as well in this particular test step okay then statement all right so we have been able to do successfully the get calls as well as the post calls uh, that is one post call that is the status code now what we will try to do here is that we will try to verify the body whether it's coming correctly or not and uh, the body what i will try to do is i'll try to make only one validation that is whether i'm getting the id back or not okay and the id has to be a value uh, what what i am passing okay so if i go back to postman what i can observe with my api which is running a sample api that the id is every time 21 okay no matter what so if i try to hit a send you can see the id is 21 now generally that's not how the database or the apis generally work if you try to insert a product like try to post a product details what will happen is this id will get automatically updated so if it is 21 it will be next time 22 and 23 and all that but this api does not do that kind of thing like it it validates okay whether it's 21 or not it's kind of a static data but it might not be static data for the apis that you might be automating okay just make sure of that but because this is any uh, specific api which every time gives 21 what i will do is I'll probably go back and then add a statement over here. I, I, I'll try to add a test over here where the ID is 21. Okay. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll just copy uh, this statement or the scenario and I'll just paste it over here. And I'll what I'll do is um, post API response. Okay. So this is kind of reusability as well. You can reuse some of the methods as well as statements or scenarios. So this post API validation that I'm doing is little different. Okay, validate post API response body works correctly. Okay, and over here, I'll just modify post API status code works correctly. So I just modified my scenario name little bit and given I hit the URL of the post product API. So I need not change anything because this is already working. I pass the URL of the products that's also working and i pass the request of the product title so that's also working and i receive the response body with id as id okay so what is this id that we are expecting it's supposed to be 21 in my response body so what i will do is i'll just add a value over here which is 21 and this will get passed to my parameter or a method now we don't have a step definition under our products yet which we have not added so what i can do is i can just hover on top of this statement and then click on create step definition okay so there are two ways to do it one is create new file or it could be products okay so i am happy with the products as well and the moment i click on that you can see that the step statement has got created okay a step definition has got created now uh, what i have to do is i have to uh, design this particular method right now we are trying to get a response body of a post method now for that what we'll do is uh, we will just uh, try to copy what we had done for our get method in get method as well we were trying to get the response body and then we were trying to store it in a string and then compare the string okay similar to that we will do so what i will do is i'll just come down and in in the response that we get right in the response that we get in the post method i'll just add a couple of statements over here which is uh, get json object id and then we are comparing it with 21 okay that's what we are doing now how we are doing is uh, for example we are verifying that the id object so when i go back to the postman you can see that there is an object which is coming back as 21 okay and we are comparing it with 
the string within the value of 21 okay so uh, what this will do is this will compare and then perform the assert similar to what we are doing in our get method okay so i'll just try to run this and see whether this really runs or not i'll go and do a build and after that i'll just click on uh, play or i'll go to insert product as such and then i'll just right click and then click on play button and it has passed with our uh, status uh, or the response is equal to uh, the uh, response is equal to id that is 21 as such okay which we have been able to do so apart from that what we have to make sure is that we are at least putting this assert uh, in um, the response body with id is equal to uh, 21 so what i will do is i'll probably move this couple of statements to this method and so that our uh, statements are uh, covered across the given when then method so i'll just go and click on build and then click on run that is i'm just running the insert product this particular scenario and the scenario runs as such and it has given us um, one scenario passed and four step passed okay so so this looks good now what we have been able to achieve until now is from the get perspective we have been able to perform the response status code validation response body validation we uh, performed the response uh, value uh, response code as well uh, as 200 for the post as well as the response um, body as such <music>now that we have looked at the get calls and the post calls apis what we will like to do is we would like to add some put um, api as well now if i go to my uh, example of uh, get store api now if i go to the first page of uh, fake store dot api dot com you can see that there is a put uh, put particular api over here and what it does is it updates the product okay so it picks and chooses a particular product and it tries to update the product okay now let's go to view details on the docs and over here i can see uh, i can just uh, scroll down and have a look on update a product okay where exactly the put is happening now you can see that the api is little bit different from what we have for the gate api as well as the post api uh, there is a particular number coming in the end and uh, that's the number that is getting updated okay so there might be a lot of products out of that seventh product is getting updated okay that's the indication that we have to give to the put api now if i go back to the postman uh, in the postman i have shown this particular example as you can see on my screen wherein you are able to perform a put operation okay now this is a base URI which is fakestoreapi.com and after that there is a products and after that there is a number okay so it's a seventh number or seventh product I would say okay or it could be fifth product whatever you want to now there needs to be a body okay uh, unlike get API put as well as post require a request body okay now this uh, body you can be kind of familiar it's almost similar to what we have in the post that is you have a title you have a price you have a description you have an image and as well as you have a category okay now what i will do is i'll click on send and let's see what we really get so what we get in the response body this time is we get an id and this is exactly the same id that we have passed here in the api okay uh, apart from that we have a status 200 okay as well which is good so we can add a couple of uh, validations over here for put that is when we hit this particular api our status code is 200 okay and apart from that we are getting an id what we are passing in our uh, url okay uh, so it's a little different from what we have a post api as you can understand these apis are working little different from post and the get that's the reason i had to show this as an example in the postman first so that you get an idea 
and after that we can go back to automating it okay so i'll go back to intellij now and first thing what i will do is i'll try to create a feature file okay now what i do is i'll go to insert product and i'll just right click i will copy this and then i'll go to features folder and right click and then paste it over here okay now when i'm pasting it is kind of a giving an indication to me what is a new name and i can probably give it either put product or i can put it as update product okay now update of product is which we are using to perform a uh, put operation okay so um, so the so when i have copied the whole feature file what might have happened is all the content of the post has come into put okay so you can see the exact copy now i'll change modify a little bit because this is a put api so i'll just make this as uh, update products using put api so that is kind of an indication for me okay now scenario uh, validate post api that is i can move it to put product api status code works correctly and uh, the second scenario we'll come to the second scenario i'll just probably uh, focus on the first one which is given i hit the url of the put product api okay so i'm going to use it little differently just to give uh, give you guys an idea it is kind of flexible for a test automation engineer or a tester uh, that you can modify your statements and you can modify if you don't want to go for reusability that is also possible but it's a unsaid rule in test automation or any kind of development is that you need to be using and reusing your components and methods how much ever you it is possible okay so okay i have changed the given statement little bit and uh, when i pass the url of the products in the request i pass the request body of the product title okay so i'll have to uh, modify this a little bit i pass the request body of um, of the put api something like that it is possible it it's up to the test automation engineers how they want to really modify this and uh, i have to take care that uh, when i pass the url of the product i will have to make sure that the url also contains the product number okay because we are updating that product so I'll just modify this a little bit when I pass the URL of the product in the request with product number. And let's keep this little bit different as in let's make this as dynamic. That is also possible. So I'll just make this as a product number. Now what I am interested here is as you can see, I'm passing the product number as my test data. Okay. So this has to be a number. So here you can be flexible, which is it can be number six. And I receive the response code. Now, as you can see, the given when then none of the steps are present in the uh, products Java file. So what I can do is I'll just hover on top of this, create step definition. I'll just select as products and add my um, uh, put related API over here. Okay. I'll go back to update product. And apart from that, when for the when statement, I'll create a step definition as well. And I will create for pass the request body of the put api i think i would not require and statement but we'll see if we have to remove it that's also fine no problems now uh, the first thing that i have to do is i have to update so in order to remove confusion what i'll do is i'll remove the scenario number two okay and uh, i will focus on the scenario number one where we are focusing on the status code of a put api now what we are passing here is a product number okay so i'll go to my products.java and then i'll try to enter my given statement which i'll try to copy from post call itself so i'll just go up and then uh, i'll take this which is a get call i'll just come down and then add it over here so i am good with my rest assured base uri okay and over here uh, apart from this I will have to make sure that I'm passing the per, uh, correct URL. Okay, so I'll, I'll take this come down in my event statement. And uh, I'll just add it over here. And over here, uh, as we can see, we are passing a product number. Okay, so that we have to take care. And that can be um, what you call it, it needs to be a dynamic value. Okay, so what I will pass here is a product number which is a when statement. So 
so I'm just passing product number as a string over here and then I'm using the product number here okay uh, as a string in my method so my um, what you call my the API is ready okay so I'll just make this as a put call and I think we should be good with that apart from that we require the um, uh, params okay request parameters so there are good number of request parameter now it does look like uh, similar to what we had it in the post so what I can do is I'll probably steal something from here I mean copy from here not steal but I'll just come down and then paste it over here okay so the title okay so we were making uh, in our insert product we were making this as a little bit dynamic so here I am not interested in the title what I'm interested in the product number so I can probably move this to a title which is a test product really doesn't matter for me in put API that's what I am kind of designing but it's up to you if you want to make it dynamic as well you can no one's stopping you so you perform a put API here and then you try to get a response okay now once you get a response it is important that you validate the response right so similar to what we did here uh, and uh, I'll just copy these ones and then try to put over here so apart from this uh, when we perform the request parameters okay we are trying to put up uh, do a po uh, post here so I'll just move this statement to this so that it gets replaced so it's a put and then we get a uh, response body as well as JSON okay so let's first validate whether this works or not uh, we are keeping this one as empty as of now and I'll just remove and I don't think and is required we are passing the details in the when uh, as such and then I come down and what I am interested in is this two statements okay whether these are appearing or not so I'll just go and perform a build once my build is successful I'll click and make sure it's kind of a rebuild just for my assurance I do a rebuild project and then I come to update product okay now update product I'll do a right click over here and I will click on debug mode okay so I'll just run this in the debug mode and I get an error let me see what the error is so it's step failed and it's a null pointer exception okay so something is passing as null and that's why we are getting this error and exactly where is that uh, failed is I pass the URL or the product in the request okay so I'll just clear this result and let's see what is exactly going as null so what I'll do is I'll come back here and I'll see where exactly am I going null okay so so I forgot to put uh, JSON object over here just uh, uh, creating a request parameters and now I'll try to run this again in a debug mode and let's see whether the run is successful so I am stopped here okay so this is my first uh, breakpoint after that I have seen the the product number is coming okay so which is good so 6 is the number which I had passed here and that's where exactly it's coming so I will click on resume so I have come here in the request body okay and I'm just clicking on here and you can see that it's a size 5 so all the um, what you call the request parameters have come I have modified this from integer to string that was causing a problem so I'll just uh, click on resume and let's see all right so fail to pass the JSON document so what exactly has happened here right now uh, over here as you can see right after products I was supposed to put a forward slash so I missed kind of missed the forward slash and after that the product number should appear so exactly how it is appearing here right right after forward slash is the number coming so I have added the forward slash and I'll just run the debug mode again so I have put a breakpoints over here and I can see that uh, my string uh, that is a get status line and the response if I hover on this response and I'll click on the groovy response I'm getting 200 okay 
okay now the status line uh, the response as such uh, let me check whether i'm getting 200 over here or not that is i'll just click on uh, resume and then you can see that uh, http 200 okay is coming which is good okay so this is what we wanted to validate that our api is running uh, correctly or not and what i'll do is i'll put a, a assert statement in the end just to make sure that uh, we are good so i'll just uh, try to find out the assert statement that we had entered in our um, uh, post call okay so i'll just copy here and then come down and then put my assert statement and uh, this is the id right now what we really wanted is this string supposed to be so i'll remove this and statement because we don't want the and statement as such and um, because we have removed it from here and then we have already reused one method which is response 200 which we have been using in our get call as well as post call so this is what how we perform the post call as well and you can see that we have created three feature files now get uh, post as well as update now quickly let's do the delete uh, api as well just to make sure that is also working fine or not so if i go to the, my fake store api.com and i go here in the delete you can see uh, that there is uh, this is exactly uh, the api exactly similar to what we have for uh, the put but we are doing a delete okay so the operation that we will require to do is a delete and we will get a 200 okay so if i go back and do it in the postman for example if i click on new and it's an http request i'll go for a delete and then add the api which i want specifically uh, for this one which i'll just change it to delete and this is exactly the api so i'll just perform a delete over here and uh, yeah we got a we got a 200 okay and you can see that the delete has happened and we tried to perform a delete on the fifth of um, what you call the fifth uh, uh, product as such so it will be very similar to that so i'll just go back and uh, i'll just quickly do a de delete so i'll just go here All right, so what I did is I uh, created one particular uh, feature file, which is delete API. Okay, so I have renamed some of the uh, statements over here so that it actually matches with the delete API. And after that, I have kind of reused some of the statement. And uh, of course, I'm not changing the response code as well. Now, what I will do is I will uh, yeah, click on here and just quickly run it and see whether the test runs successfully or not. All right, so I have got a, a response back and you can see that uh, it's a 200 okay and my three steps have passed. So even my delete looks good. So uh, ultimately we have performed uh, get call, uh, post call update, post calls, put calls and the delete calls. <music>
and uh, which means we have five scenarios and the delete okay so the delete also we have validated and put it in our automation script and this also is one scenario which is total six scenarios are there okay so there will be a lot of steps but there are six scenarios now in order to run this whole features uh, together what we have to do is we can probably uh, right click on the features folder as such and there is an option over here that run all features in features okay now if i click on this what really happens is you can see that the run is happening and uh, let's wait for the run to get successful so takes a little bit of time and then you get a message that it has been successfully completed six scenarios have passed and 20 test steps have uh, passed as well and you have got that uh, it has taken around 10 seconds of time now how do we get a report okay report for a non-technical person to understand what all test has gone in this particular script okay um, and reporting is important as well from cucumber perspective for that what you can do is you can go to target and over here in the target you can see that there is a cucumber html report okay this is kind of a customizable report now what i'm showing is that uh, this is a generic report just to give an idea if you don't have time to customize this report you can still use a generic report and once i open up this folder you can click on this uh, index.html i'll just right click and then there is an option probably scroll down and go for open in and then there is a browser and there is a chrome okay so i'll just click on that and it will open something like this okay so it's a browser related um, uh, reporting and you can see that uh, there are uh, if i just uh, remove this drop down somehow and you can see that there are get all products from api which has uh, seen okay you were able to perform and as well as you were able to see the insert products okay so insert products validate post api that also you are performing correctly and even um, uh, you can add the put as well as um, delete api as well in your reporting so this is a very good uh, mechanism to perform your uh, reporting purposes and you are getting the validation of uh, six scenarios which are passed and 20 test steps which are passed so you can add some more validations as per your need uh, as per your design but my whole idea was how you can really reuse some of the concept or reuse some of your methods to do this validations of apis in a cucumber fashion that uh, it will help you to build a reusable framework as such so one thing the last is if you do like these kind of videos kindly like share and subscribe and happy coding, happy automation testing.